All right, so for the next tip in this series, I'm gonna show you how you can increase the functionality of your Wacom device by creating your own custom radio menu. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I'm just gonna show you what the idea of a radio menu is. So I have my Wacom Pen Pro 3 and I can just go ahead and click on a button and this radio menu will appear. So this is what a radio menu is. And right now I have a bunch of icons. So let's just go ahead and move this in here. And I show you in previous videos that you can click on this icon to pin it. That way, when you click on any of these buttons, the thing is not gonna disappear. So I'm gonna click on this one and it basically flips the entire composition. So when I'm creating this type of quick sketches, uh, I can also do it uh, upside down or like vertically. It sort of like helps me visualize the composition in different angles and, and kind of like judge what the, the focal point or the center of attention would be. So I do this all the time. That's why I have this in my custom radio menu because I can switch these vertically and horizontally uh, but I can also go into full screen like so I can also click on this icon right here to rotate my canvas right now um, so if I want to just get closer and just rotate the canvas to do like it's easier to do straight lines in, in that fashion and I can just go back and go back from scroll full screen and reset the, the rotation and a couple of other things that I have uh, let's say if I select all of these layers right I can duplicate them I can go ahead and merge them down. And if I click on this icon right here, it's going to bring in the levels. So I can just contrast the entire thing or you know, add a little bit more brightness to it, uh, play around with the mid values and that sort of thing. So this one right here for me brings in the levels. So the idea is that whatever you use the most, or at least that's one of the, the ideas that whatever you use the most, the shortcuts that you use the most, you can assign them to a radial menu. And that way, whatever you're doing in whatever point in your, in your canvas or in your, um, in your 3D software, whatever that might be, you can bring those um, those dials or this radio menu. So let me just go ahead and show you what this looks like in something like ZBrush. So here we have a little concept I'm doing, I'm doing in ZBrush. I can just go ahead and bring in this radio menu that I've shown you in previous videos that actually access other radio menus. So I have this uh, to deal with masking tools. Uh, I also, I think I showed you that before as well. So if I select this, uh, let's actually do something like this. You know, I have this mask, I can click on auto and it will just auto fill that, for example, or I can mask something like this and I can grow that mask, I can boost it. So I have all the tools that I need to uh, to deal with anything that has to do with masking. I can also bring in my radio menu, click on zero sub tools, and it will show me all the, the, the things that I usually use for um, when, I'm, when I'm dealing with sub tools. So for example, this one right now that I have in here, this is the highest resolution. I can click on lower and then it sends me to the lower resolution. And if I bring the rest of the objects, I can do the same thing by clicking on all higher or I can click on all lower. So all of the pieces that have subdivision levels will go to the lower or to the highest subdivision level. So that is the idea with the radio menus. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to go into full screen so that you can see more of it. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to set this up. So let's go ahead and bring in the Wacom Center. And just on a side note, I'm going to show you that you can also do the same thing by bringing in the Wacom Tablet Properties. So this is something that you will find under the control palette. This one, Wacom Tablet Properties, that is this window. You can do the same thing that I'm going to show you from here. Uh, it's just that the, the Wacom Center is a little bit easier and nicer in terms of the UI. Uh, it's a little bit more intuitive in my, in my opinion, but you can totally do it from here. So I'm going to cover the Wacom Center just because I think this is the one that you would be using. But um, at the end, I'm just going to show you really quickly how you can do it with the tablet properties. All right, so the first thing I need to do is create the, the set of tools that I need. So I'm going to click on on-screen shortcuts and you have access to radio menu, grid panels and pen gestures. Let's open up the radio menu and you see I have a few of them. So if I click on my ZBrush tools, this is the one that I bring in uh, when I'm in ZBrush. Uh, in Photoshop, if I click on Photoshop tools, this is the one that I just showed you that has only icons. All right, so to create a new one, let's click on new and click on new radio menu. Then let's go ahead and give it a name and let's call this one tools. Uh, it could be absolutely anything you want. Uh, select this one, this is the only option at the moment. Click on apply. And now we have a brand new uh, radial menu, which you can see here. And we can go ahead and start assigning this. Now, these uh, colors is totally up to you. You can just hover over and assign a different color if you want to. Um, I think unless you have something a bit more advanced that have like a radial menu within a radial menu, it's a bit distracting, but it's, you know, this is a, a personal preference. So what I'll do is I'm gonna select the gray uh, color right here and click apply to all keys. So this is kind of like a, you know, blank state. And let's go ahead and assign some shortcuts that we might use in Photoshop. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to click on undo. So this is going to be my undo. Save is fine. Uh, this tab is actually the full screen. So by selecting tab, let's click on keyboard shortcut. And this is tab. Let's go ahead and name it something like full screen. 
just so that it's easy. I like the capital letters just because it's a little bit easier to read. So full screen, uh, maybe for this one, we can go ahead and add another one. Let's click on keyboard shortcut and I'm gonna type Control E. This is going to merge down, so merge down like so. And for this one, let's go ahead and do another one, keyboard shortcut. So you're gonna be using the keyboard shortcut like in most cases the most because it's the one that allows you to uh, to select custom shortcuts that you might have assigned to the uh, to the specific software. So in this case, Control J, that's to duplicate in Photoshop. Let's click apply and that's it. Now we can continue doing this, but um, I think you get the idea. You can just click on anything that you want uh, and assign anything. So I just wanna show you that you can click on this one and if you're not gonna use this, you can go to other and you can click on disable. So I'm gonna click on disable for all these three and that way they won't appear. Um, I mean, they're gonna be blank when we bring this in. Okay, so now that we've created this, it's done. It's called tools and we've finished. We can go ahead and further customize it a little bit by changing the label from text only to icon and text, and that way you can assign different icons. So for Merge Down, we can click on this one, click on um, Keyboard Shortcut, and we can click on this icon to change it. So let's find something that makes more sense for Merge Down, like this one. Click Apply. There we go. Uh, duplicate. I think there's one that is pretty clear. Let's click on Icon, and this one will do just fine. So this will work as a duplicate. For Full Screen, we can select that one, Keyboard Shortcut, and I'm gonna use the same one that I use in my other radio menu. There we go. Uh, save is fine and undo is fine. All right, so we have now text and icons or you can also use icons. I would only advise to use icons if you know for sure the actions and you're already, uh, you're already used to the kind of like the, the gesture, like if you bring in the radio menu and you go up, that's undo. If you go right, that's full screen and that sort of thing. For now, I'm just gonna keep it as icon and text just so that it's easy. And now that we've completed this radio menu, we need to assign it to either a express key in the Wacom Cintiq or into a button of the pen, right? So in my case, I'm gonna use my Wacom Pen 2. So let's go back to devices, right? So if I click on Pro Pen 3, I have already assigned this radial menu, so I don't wanna override it. So let's go ahead and click on Pro Pen 2. And you see I have ZBrush and Photoshop, right? So in Photoshop is using the, the ZBrush tools, but I can just go ahead and in this button or maybe actually use this one. So I wanna click on this one. And now that I've clicked on this button to assign something, I can go ahead and find the radial menu and I can look for tools. So this is the one that we created. So now let's bring in Photoshop and I have my Wacom Pen Pro 2 and I'm gonna use the button that I assign. There we go, so here is my radial menu, right? I can leave it here. Let's duplicate this one. So I have this layer selected. Let's click on duplicate and let's actually merge that down. So you see it is merging down. So it is very easy to do it this way. Maybe add a new layer so that you, you can see maybe something different, I don't know, something like that, right? So it's a couple of layers, something like this. Let's bring this in and then I'm gonna duplicate it. So, you know, I have this um, extra stroke in there. And then if I wanna merge all of these three, I just need to go to the top and click on merge down, merge down and merge down, right? So that's pretty much what the radial menu is and it is working totally fine. Now, a couple more things about radial menus. Now you see that I have this uh, pin, action. Again, this is something that I've shown you before that you can pin it and put it whatever you want to. So I can just go ahead and right click and it will appear again. Now, personally, and this is just a personal preference, I like the radial menu to appear right below the mouse. And you see right now it's just appearing there. Uh, I can put it maybe somewhere here and then that's it. Every time that I bring it in, it's going to be in this area. So what I like about radial menu is that they appear exactly where the mouse is. So let's go back to the Wacom Center and I'm going to collapse this. I'm gonna go to my on-screen menus, let's go to radio menu tools, and I'm gonna click on display at cursor. So this is gonna be on. So now if I go back to Photoshop, now whenever I click that button, you see the menu appears right where my cursor is. So it just makes it a little bit easier to, you know, if I'm going to click here, just click on undo, and that, that way it just shows that we can undo a few times. Um, if you're gonna use the same button multiple times, it's better to just pin it temporarily. So I can undo all of this, and then uh, pin it back or unpin it again. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I would recommend that you do that. If you wanna create these radial menus, make sure that uh, this is enabled so that it appears where your mouse cursor is. Uh, but again, it's just a total preference. Now on a side note, I just wanna mention that the Cintiq Pro actually handles 4K resolution, but for the purpose of this video, I'm recording at Full HD so that you can see the interface and um, you know everything is not so tiny, but it's something to consider when you create these radial menus. So let me just go back in here. Um, so if you click on the size, you can change it to, let's say, let's make it really big, like six, right? You won't see any change in here, but when you click on launch, you will see a preview of that 
uh, radial menu. So this to me is massive <laughs> right now, uh, so it's not very useful, so I prefer to have something small. And let's go ahead and set it to three. So this is a little bit better for what I want. And once you get used to the shortcuts or the placement of these shortcuts, all you need to do is change this to just icons only. Yeah, that's a little bit better, I think. Uh, but if you want to change it to just text, again, you can just say just text and you can increase the text size. Let's click on launch and you see now we have a real menu that doesn't have any icon, but the, the text is pretty clear. So I just wanted to show you that because again, depending on the resolution of your screen, if you're having a 4K or not, that um, this is a great way to customize the, the look and feel of your menu. Now, one more thing that I should mention about radial menus is that you hover over and you can change the color. So um, I prefer to have something clean, otherwise it becomes a little bit distracting. But let's say if you want to make sure that there is a, I don't know, a shortcut that you shouldn't be able to accidentally click on, for example, undo, um, for whatever reason, I can mark it, mark it as red. And that way I know that when I bring it into Photoshop, this one is a shortcut that I need to be a bit more careful with, right? But you can do the same thing with anything. Um, just need to hover over anything that you want to change and that's it, you change the color. Uh, but see what I mean? Now it becomes a little bit distracting. So you when, when you go in Photoshop and you bring this thing in, I mean, it could work if you're, if you're happy to color code things. Uh, for me, it's a little bit distracting, so I prefer not to have colors. But this is the reason why I wanted to show you how to customize things within the Wacom Center. Because if you do it from the Wacom Tablet properties, you can totally do it, but you won't be able to customize it as much. So just to show you how it's done, uh, we select the device. Currently, I have the Cintiq Pro selected. Let's go to Functions in here. And on the Functions, we have the on-screen shortcuts as well. So it allows you to do the same thing, but you see it's a little bit more um, restrictive in the way that you set it up. I should have my tools in here. So this is the one that we just created. And you can just go ahead and assign different things in here. But the UI is a little bit different. So you can totally do it. It's just that you won't be able to, uh, to visualize it in the same way that you do in the Wacom Center and assign colors and all of that. All right, so that's it for this tip. Hopefully this has been useful for increasing your productivity. I'll see you in the next tip.